Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we're doing a rather special video to me. Um, we are going to be doing my original uh, first gaming PC I ever built. So let's get into that. So, uh, first gaming PC I ever built um, is not as old as some people would think. I'm not 40 years old, I'm actually 26. Um, so for me, the first gaming computer I built was back in uh, 2008. It was in 2008, so we're looking at just over 10 years ago. Um, and it was very late in 2008 as well. Uh, it was in December when I got it. Um, so, the parts I went with at the time uh, was dictated by a budget of $1,000. Um, that had to include a screen, FYI, and also Microsoft Windows in the cost because, yeah, that's the way it was back then. Um, and so, the parts that I got, um, we'll start with the CPU. The CPU I have here is not 100% the same. It's very close in performance, that's why I picked it. Uh, I actually had a Pentium dual core uh, E5200. Um, now that was actually a cut down version of a Core 2 Duo back then. Um, the difference was it had 3 megabytes of uh, L2 cache instead of 6 megabytes, like the full blown Core 2 Duos. Um, and it was clocked at uh, 2.5 gigahertz. Now the one I have here is an E6500. Uh, uh, and this one is clocked at 2.93 gigahertz. So it's a bit of a bump. Um, but I think uh, the front side bus is a little bit higher. So I had a 200 megahertz front side bus. This one has 266 megahertz front side bus. So there's a bit of a difference in uh, the chip, but the relative performance is going to be about the same. Uh, so um, that was the CPU. Now the motherboard I actually went with back then was a budget low end. This was like the, the, the H310 of the time, or if you're an AMD person, the... Um, I want to say A320, um, but the difference was it had overclocking, also the B310 B doesn't overclock, uh, have overclocking. So it was a Gigabyte G31M-S2L, um, was a fantastic motherboard for the time, uh, it was like a hundred and something dollars. It took my dual core chip, you can actually put quad core chips on it, um, the VRM was pretty yeah, so I wouldn't be putting quad core chips on it if you wanted to overclock. Um, but with my Pentium dual core, I managed to overclock from the stock frequency of 2.5 right up to 3.75 um, in Australia in the middle of summer when it's hot. Uh, so it was a damn good chip. It overclocked like absolute snot. Um, it was very different back then. You bought the budget chip, you overclocked the snot out of it, you got the performance of the higher end chips that cost a lot more money. Now, um, that's the motherboard, that's the CPU. RAM, I actually only had a single... Uh, two gigabyte DDR2 stick. Um, I didn't understand the whole concept of dual tunnel back then because again, this was my first gaming computer. Um, I should have probably went with um, two one gigabyte sticks, but the single one, uh, the single two gigabyte stick was fine, and I was able to upgrade it later to four gig. Um, but that's a story for another day. Uh, and so that's RAM, and then for graphics card, I had a GeForce 9500 GT. Um, was a great graphics card. Uh, it required no external six pin power. Um, so it could use like a dodgy power supply and a dodgy power supply I used. Um, so for reference, this is actually a 512 megabyte uh, VRAM graphics card. I think it's GDDR3 from memory. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's GDDR, GDDR3. Um, and the power supply, this is not the exact power supply. Back then it was like a 400 watt. Here I have a 500 watt, but it's generic. It doesn't have any six pin power on it. Um, oh, sorry, I lie. It does have one six pin power on it, but that's it. Uh, as for the storage, I only had a single one terabyte drive, which was quite large for the time. Um, I had that because I just wanted to get as big a storage as I could possibly get. Um, and this is, again, is not the exact same case, but for intensive purposes, it's pretty close to the original case I had because it was a generic case that came with the generic power supply. Um, so that was it. The, the system cost me $1,000 back then, um, which was a lot of money. It took me like six months of working in my after school job because I was still in school and 15 at the time. Um, and I saved up for six months. I bought all the parts. It was quite awesome. Uh, and you know what? It was actually pretty good for the time. Um, it could run Fallout 3. Uh, it ran, what else did I play on? I think I played Fallout New Vegas on it. 
Um, it kind of did it all, and it, it wasn't the best thing out there, but when you overclocked that CPU, it just removed any performance issues that it had. Um, and, you know, there were things that could have been done better. Um, I actually wished I could have got a Core 2 Duo E8400, but that was at the time of the global recession, so the E8400, when I originally looked at it, was affordable within my $1,000 budget. And it, GFC hit, and yeah, that didn't happen because the um, CPU doubled in price, and I was stuck with a little Pentium Dual Core. Uh, so, that's the story behind the story. Let's get this thing built, and uh, we're going to put... I haven't decided if I'm going to put the original OS or Windows 7 on it because I did eventually go to Windows 7 when it came out. Um, but I did actually have Windows Vista on this system. But uh, Vista doesn't work very well with Steam and I don't have my original game disc so I think I'm going to probably have to go with Windows 7. But let's build it first and then we will cross that bridge. So built complete now, uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, uh, and to be honest, the 775 platform is really not that different from the modern Intel platform. Um, the socket style is pretty much the same, the RAM slots are pretty much the same, graphics cards are still PCIe, um, no USB 3, that was non-existent when uh, my computer came out, or at least it wasn't available on um, any mainstream platforms. Um, but, I guess we should see if this thing powers on, so, um, fingers crossed, because I actually don't know if it's going to work. Yeah, power. That's a good sign. Right. Um, so man, this brings back some memories. So this system, uh, it was friggin' awesome back in the day. Uh, it went like an absolute rocket. Um, we're going to do some overclocking on this, maybe a little bit limited because I haven't got a custom cooler. I did, back in the day, eventually get a custom cooler, but at the moment it's in its stock state. Um, but we're going to configure this guy, we'll put Windows 7 on it, and then we will run some games on this. Guys, so setup's finished now. Uh, Windows is installed. Uh, Service Pack 1 is on there because you have to put Service Pack 1 on Windows 7. Um, otherwise things don't install properly and things don't work. Uh, we now also have a few games installed that I actually played back then. Uh, most notably we've got Fallout 3, uh, Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas, Settlers 7. I played the crap out of that back in the day. Um, and also put Assassin's Creed on there, as, uh, sorry, Assassin's Creed 2 on there. Um, all these bring back happy new memories. And what doesn't bring back happy memories is not realising how, well sorry, is, is realising how crap computers were back then. Because it's really slow. Like, really slow. Um, yeah, clean install the Windows 7 and it really chugs to open the web browser, it chugs when you open multiple things. Um, back then I thought it was great. Um, but yeah, it seems that things don't age very well, that's including my head, and it's like a fair. But anyway, let's play some games! So, true to any old PC build I do, this shit happens. Look at that. Fallout 3 has stopped working. I played for five minutes, and the damn thing crashed. 
Um, so, yeah. I think uh, that kind of tells me everything I need to know about memory lane. Um, I remember this being a lot better back then, but it uh, looks like 10 years doesn't help. So, I'm going to leave it there, guys. I don't want to drag this video out for too long. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed rebuilding my old computer, and uh, I will thoroughly enjoy tearing it apart and just remembering it as a great thing from the past and never doing it again. Uh, so, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike if you disliked it. Get subscribed if you want to keep following me and getting more videos. Uh, check out the Discord server. I have the link down in the video description. Um, if you can jump on there, ask me questions, and also, you know, ask other people in there questions. Um, it's a great little community that's growing. Uh, and uh, what else? We've also got social media stuff down there, the Facebooks, the Twitters, the Instagrams, all that socials crap that people use that I don't really use that much, but other people use it, so I have to use it. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.